You so you're with the Epic? Yeah. My my wife goes, why do you get this newspaper? At, uh, it's not for, it's not from here. I'm like because it's the only newspaper that tells the truth. Yeah, it is. So go to paper right now. So what did you think of uh, the speech tonight? Trump speech. Correct. I thought it was very good. I thought it was very specific. specific. I like the way he he, he named the uh, bad Republicans by name, laid them all out. And the fact that he is going to, you know, really mount a campaign to to get a lot more MAGA candidates into the Republican Party, I the I just would have liked to seen a little bit more specifics on marching orders towards the end. We've like, heard that a lot tonight from the people we've yeah, talked yeah. to. They, they, they want to hear more actionable items. That yeah, they, we, look, everybody's looking for direction right now. We we're all fired up. We want to do stuff, and the more we know. Of, President Trump's plans, the better we can get organized. So that's the only thing that I thought was a little bit, a little bit loose. But other than that, it was very, very good. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, you've seen him speak before in person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how do you think the energy was tonight? I thought the energy was good. I thought he was, he was, it was appropriate. It wasn't high energy like I've seen him other times. It was very measured. Very accurate, very specific, and just laying out where we are at, you know, the threats we face. And so it was quite sober, you know, it was quite right. a sober speech. And there was promise of more to come, And but I, I, I just would have liked a little bit more hint of, of the direction. But, but right. I was pleased, I was, I was pleased with the speech overall. Yeah. Uh, so you're with Epic Time. What's what's any special things? Anything in the future for Epic Times? I mean, I, I love getting all the ba I get all the fold outs and everything else. And so, yeah. look, I'm I'm not at a level I can comment on editorial policy or anything like that. I write for them. I have a, a TV show, um, Trevor Loud and Counter Punch, on their channel NTD TV. So, but I I, I know that they are getting ready for the battle ahead, put it that way. They understand that this is a, a real war against free speech that we're having right now, and Epic Times is one of the leading forces for free speech in the country right now. So they're getting, I know they're getting ready to fight that battle, because if we lose free speech, we lose everything, and they really do understand that. Many of them come from China. They saw what happened to them in China. Their friends were persecuted, their family was persecuted, and there was no way to, no way to fight back because there was no free speech. Well, they're not going to let that happen here, here to us, you know. Who's been, uh, with all the people that you've met and interviewed and talked to, who's been, your, like, who's been the most humbling or powerful uh, interview that you've done? Look, I, would, I, look I, did, I didn't do many interviews. I got mainly interviewed myself. But I, I think of the speeches I watched... The one I was most impressed with was Ron DeSantis because he was very matter-of-fact, very to the point, very factual, very confident. You know, he has got to be a serious presidential contender at some point in the future because he gets it and he's brave and he understands the threats. But um, overall, it was... Uh, you know, I saw some pretty inspiring people, you know, in the cross flow, watching people be right. interviewed and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, Mike Lindell always, always does that. Yeah, he was, uh, he was great today. You know, he, he's, he's always, he's got uh, such a fantastic personal story. Uh, uh, I think he stopped in every single media booth today. And, and oh, did I saw him every time I turned around, he was at another one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he's a real man of the people. And um, he's got a very inspiring story and he's brave as hell. You know? Where are you from originally? New Zealand. New Zealand. Yeah, got a southern accent. Gotcha. It was one time I was in, uh, went to Auckland, okay. in downtown Auckland, and there was a deli there, and uh, they had this sandwich called the Mega, and it was like a, it was a huge sandwich. It was about six inches tall, and it just had everything on it. It was incredible. Um, yeah, me and a buddy of mine went to Rotorua. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and went down the, the, the smells, Alpine. Smells a little bit. Yeah, yeah, the volcano. Yeah. And uh, went down the Alpine slide. Or the luge or whatever yeah, it's good. Luge, yeah, yeah, yeah. So a beautiful country, beautiful yeah, country. Yeah. That is I, I've always said if, if I couldn't live in the United States, I'd like to live on the North Island in New Zealand. Yeah, 
Well, look, did, did you actually go to the South Island? No, we didn't have the time. Well, if you went to the South Island, you would have said, I would have lived in the South Island. <laughs> South Island's even better, but it's all of it's good. All so of it's so good. what do you, like, what are the folks back home, what are they saying about, how do they look at Donald Trump? I mean, is it, is it, what do you think? Well, you've got your left wing who just parrot the, the talking points here, but what, what they, see, what it is, you know, we were saved by America during World War II. You know, we were facing invasion by the Japanese, and it was American boys that stopped that. And now we're looking at China, and we're looking at Trump, who was putting China in its place. And now we're, they're freaking out down there because they understand that China has its friend in the White House now. So, and, and this is not just New Zealand. All the countries around the Pacific Rim are freaking out now. Right from India, Indonesia, Taiwan, Australia, New Zealand, they're all thinking, what the heck? Because China is already influencing our country big time. And while we had Trump in the White House, we could say, yep, America will come to our aid. America will keep China in its place. Well, that's gone. It was almost, uh, I, I think it was 30 years ago today, I was a Cobra pilot, and we, we, oh, okay. we stormed into Iraq 30 years ago today wow. to wow. support Kuwait. Um, yeah. Well, it was kind of because you, uh, you were talking about, about uh, uh, saving New Zealand. One, uh, I'd gone there. I was, I was young. I was, almost, I was like 20 years old, and I went back to, for, uh, for um, Iraqi freedom, and, and we were in Kuwait. And one of the things, one of, one of those officers that we were working with was a captain in the Kuwaiti army and he I got to know him pretty well and the thing that he told us was he loved the Americans and the reason why he loved his Amer the Americans was when he was a kid and Saddam Hussein's tanks were rolling through Kuwait City you know he was a kid and you know they were scared and he said that the Americans came in and saved Kuwait City and he always was thankful for that and so here I am years later I was there for the first time and here years later um, I'm there and I'm serving next to the guy and it was just it was a moment you know what I mean it yeah was, look I, I can understand that look it, it's it's I think a lot of Americans don't understand we you see all this anti-American crap in the media or whatever but you don't don't understand when you talk to the common people a small businessman a lot of Americans don't understand <coughs> don't understand just how much America is appreciated that America has done more to liberate, you know, oppressed countries than any other country has, done more to spread prosperity than any other country, and and people understand that if America is not okay, if America, if we lose America, we lose freedom everywhere. There's nowhere to run. Look, I come from New Zealand, which is considered one of the safest countries in the world. Why would I come to leave New Zealand to come to America, you know? When, when America's got a lot of grief right now. Well, we know that if America goes down, every free country falls. The domino effect. Everyone. The We're in kind of reverse, yeah. yeah. Look, if, uh, I'm a coward. If I could find somewhere to go run away and hide, <laughs> I'd be there. But there isn't anywhere. You know, we've got to save America so we can save Australia, so we can save New Zealand, so we can save Japan, so we can save Taiwan and, and Israel and all our friends, you know. Right. Um, so there's a real fear in countries like New Zealand about the implications of this election and you know, leave apart the fact that it was stolen, but just the, the way the world balance of power has now shifted in China's favor. It's not considered healthy. Um, say again, your, your website, your show, and when it's on and yeah. stuff like that? My website is trevorloudon.com. And you have to put it in the search bar at the top because Google won't bring it up. TrevorLoudon.com. And my show is Counterpunch with Trevor Loudon. And best to go look up Counterpunch Trevor Loudon on Rumble because we have it on YouTube as well, but they take about it, they take most of the episodes down. So Trevor Loudon Counterpunch Rumble. Yeah, we've we've had that problem. I, I mean, there was a point where. On on Facebook, we we're we we're bumping up 300,000 yeah, yeah, yeah. hit. I, I mean, now I'm get we're getting thirty four. You know, yeah, they they just shadow ban you. They they take they 
they knock people off your likes, they do everything, you know. Yeah. I got taken off Twitter just the other day, permanently after 11 years or something like that. So I understand that. But I... I, I...